The Princess Alexandra Hospital Liver Transplant Centre began in 1985 under the leadership of Professor Russell Strong. Under his leadership and guidance, we started liver transplantation here in Australia. It was the first centre to do a living-related um, liver transplant in a child, and then subsequent has continued on over the years. We are the only centre in Australia that does triple um, heart-lung liver transplants, particularly for patients with cystic fibrosis liver disease. The state of Queensland is approximately twice the size of Texas and we provide a high quality service to people who live many miles away. We see a vast array of patients with both chronic and acute liver diseases. The common ones obviously are patients with alcohol, chronic viral hepatitis and increasingly so patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. So the most common uh, indication for liver transplantation in Australia is hepatitis C, usually in combination with hazardous alcohol consumption, and that causes liver failure and also hepatocellular carcinoma. Other important causes for us, we're seeing increasing numbers of patients with obesity-related liver disease, also hepatitis B, uh, inherited forms of liver disease, and some other metabolic forms of liver disease. Obesity uh, in Australia, as in other parts of the world, is increasing in uh, prevalence. So we're seeing lots of patients presenting with uh, obesity-related liver injury. So that's both on its own as uh, patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. But obesity is also a cofactor in other liver diseases such as hepatitis C, uh, hemochromatosis, hepatitis B. So obesity has direct effects on the liver and can also uh, make other liver diseases more, um, more serious. At uh, Princess Alexandra Hospital, we're a tertiary referral centre for hepatobiliary and liver transplant uh, surgery and as, as such we perform all, all kinds of liver resections, uh, biliary surgery uh, and pancreatic resections and li liver transplant for adults and children. The most common reason for liver transplant in Qu Queensland is uh, hepatitis C, uh, closely followed by alcohol or, or a combination of the two. Uh, there are a number of other uh, reasons for liver transplant performed in Queensland. Hepatitis B is a, a relatively common one given our proximity to Asia uh, as well as a, a number of other reasons for transplant. Recently we're now um, moving into the area of DCD donors and we're, we're performing some trials with uh, an ex vivo uh, perfusion machine uh, to use uh, DCD donors. Uh, so we really are on the cutting edge now and have been always. So after a liver transplant has been conducted, the patient, certainly in the acute setting, is always at risk of complications, albeit surgical complications from their immunosuppression. So intensive surveillance is vital to the success of the liver transplant. Uh, so therefore, once patients are discharged from hospital, uh, we have a very intense surveillance system where patients are seen in the outpatient setting regularly and then less frequently once uh, they have proven to be progressing quite well. Uh, we get to know our patients very well uh, the, and we look after patients for all of Queensland and Australia. So this is a, a great unit and a very successful unit for a long time now. I think the success of this unit is based upon the members of the team. Uh, particularly the transplant coordinators who do an excellent job in coordinating the patient's care uh, from the pre-transplant setting to after the transplant long term. In this particular um, program, um, the surgery, the major surgery is actually the liver transplant operation uh, and the transplant coordinators who are nurses are, are involved in organising the operation on the night for the patient. So the preparation for their operation actually starts right from the beginning when they first come to see us and we start their education and they're getting prepared for what is actually going to happen on their night of transplant. So hopefully there's no surprises on the night. I think um, patients establishing a relationship with nurses gives them a good stability and grounding. We're more accessible um, sometimes than the doctors are um, and often we're able to um, sort out smaller problems for the patients um, quickly without them being worrying about things at home so and we can streamline things so if there's a problem we can sort it out if a doctor needs to be involved then we can get them involved. In any department it is important to consider what has happened in the past, know your history and what is likely to happen in the future and anticipate those changes. 
succession planning is very important and we're very fortunate here in having two young, bright, hard-working clinicians in the form of Dr Tallis and Dr Hodgkinson who I think will take over the reins in future years.